Hello. Sonda, come again. Yeah, I'm, I was saying hello and welcome to Eyewitness News. Uh, what's your thanks, own? Thanks for having me. What's your verdict on the exercise nationwide uh, reports you've got from the regions? How is it looking? And the, the well, national so far, capital. Apart from Ashanti region, the 16 cap, uh, regional capitals have all reported uh, massive, well attended, peaceful demonstrations to us. So. I would say that by and large, the demonstration has been a great success. Attendance has been beyond comprehension. Uh, it, it's been more than what we, the organizers, were actually expecting. I see. It's been overwhelming, and uh, we are really impressed with the commitment that our rank and file and uh, citizens of Ghana, progressive forces, uh, have shown to the democracy of Ghana. I see. Interesting. Now, let's talk about the message. Would you say the message has been well received? Um, well, uh, many people are now getting to understand what our concerns are. Um, some of these things take time. We don't expect that uh, in a matter of um, a day, every Ghanaian will understand the seriousness uh, of the issues we are raising and the the, the, the merit in saying. But uh, the feedback we've seen from social media and uh, the feedback we've gotten from our social partners, other political parties, civil society organizations, and even you, our friends in the fourth estate, show clearly that gradually people are beginning to understand the enormity of the problem the MPP is complaining about. They are now getting to understand that what we are lamenting is not about NDC, MPP, CPP, PNC. No, it's about the democracy of Ghana. It's about protecting the vote, the inalienable right to vote uh, that Ghanaians have. It's about the Electoral Commission ensuring that we have a credible register that all stakeholders will have confidence in uh, for a free, fair, and peaceful election. So, so far, so good. But the struggle continues, the advocacy continues, and I, I am hopeful that in the coming days a lot more people will join the struggle and our call for an independent forensic audit into the 2024 provisional voters register and the EC IT system. Okay, now the EC deputy chairperson received your petition. Uh, did he make any comments? What are your impressions about the reception you got from the EC head office, both in the national capital and also in the other regions, and also the police, how they handled the demonstration? Well, the reception we got from the Electoral Commission, I would say, um, was very, very um, abysmal. But we're not surprised because that is what this G. Mensa Bosman Asari led Electoral Commission is. They have no respect for the people of this country. They simply don't care. All they care about is to manipulate the register uh, for the benefit of the ruling New Patriotic Party. And, you know, the, the, the culture of impunity they display is just unimaginable. Look at such an important protest by the largest opposition party and Ghanaians from all walks of life who are demanding transparency, they are demanding accountability, they are demanding fairness. They are simply asking you to allow for an audit so that we can have a register that everybody has confidence in to be credible for the election. And Jimenza was nowhere to be found. He's gone a wall. You understand? He's locked herself up somewhere. I don't know what she's scared of. She could not even gather the courage to come out to meet us. But Swanasari, eh, who has been running his mouth on this very program, was nowhere to be found. They pushed their poor director of operations, Samotete, to come and meet us. As, as Steve were some Cutlass welding or machine gun welding protesters. So, so it would not be fair to describe Samuel Tete as one poor director of operations, and you are using poor here to mean significance. He, the electoral oh, no, commission, but, but, the electoral commission is made up of seven members. There's a chairperson, two deputies, and four commissioners. Bosman Asari, who you were expecting to meet you, has a contemporary. That's uh, yes. Tete, and he's the one who met you. So I'm why, not saying, but why, but I'm saying that hmm. an issue of this importance. A deputy chairperson should have, is the one who received should have, should it. Have, That's have, number two have. at the EC. That's big. So where was the number one? 
there are so many times that petitions you are brought to... You know where the number one was? I have no where idea. The number one is in Ghana. <laughs> so where was she? But Sammy, what is he running from? Sammy, when you, you... See, you see, you see, Sandra, just call Jimenez and play back her own words to her. In October 2015, when she was executive director of the Institute for Economic Affairs, she called for an independent audit into the register at the time. And she even said that cost should not be an excuse for the EC to do such an audit. Why was she calling for an audit? Because the, the MPP at the time were making frivolous allegations about the presence of over 80,000 Togolese on our register. I'm sure you do remember. So what I think that today, that there is incontrovertible evidence of illegal transfer of voters by district officers and returning officers of the EC, something that the EC itself has admitted to, leading to the suspension of some of its officers. Why is it that Jimensa is no longer interested in an audit? Why is she no longer interested in an, in an investigation? My brother, if they have nothing to hide, why are they afraid of a simple audit? Because if they have done their job well, if they have not manipulated the register and they have produced a credible provisional register, then they should actually be leading the call for an audit into the register to vindicate their integrity. The reason why they are running away from accountability, from transparency, even though their, their declared motto is fairness, transparency, and accountability, and, and, and integrity, is because they have manipulated the register and they know that an audit will expose them badly. That is it. What next? Because, Umaru, uh, mm. Umaru, I come to your office. Eh? You are looking for your money in your pocket. You can't find your money. I have cleansed my fist. He says, I mean, I can't find my money. Can you open your palm for me to see if you have stolen my money? Sammy Jensi says, I have not stolen your money. Okay, open your palm and let's see if there is no money in your palm. Sammy Jensi says, I have not stolen your money, but I will open my palm. What's that? What kind of cock and bull story is this? If you have not stolen any money, then you should happily, gladly open your palm so that you allay any fear, any concern, any mm -hmm. suspicion. That something wrong has been you, done. You are a lawyer. There's yeah. something people call vexatious. Is that not a vexatious and a waste of everybody's time? The, this kind of analogy you are creating that you vexatious. just can't... Vexatious. Mm. When... Oh, my brother. What without, are you talking without, about? Without, you know, I mean, you're just asking the person to open... I mean, this, the analogy is not the same, but are, I'm just saying that what you're saying, you are, you are forcing people to open their palm to look for money. Whether We are know. not forcing anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. There is clear evidence. No, Omar, just a second. Clear evidence that the Electoral Commission has illegally transferred people from Tamale to Pusiga in absentia. That is criminal. The electoral laws of Ghana doesn't allow for that. Haven't they admitted? So how is that vestigious? They've admitted. Haven't they suspended a district officer, even though they know the district officer was not the one in charge, but the returning officer? Haven't they admitted? Haven't they come out to say that they did transfers without a liveliness test and that the liveliness test they used our taxes to buy was an European model which did not work. Are you not alarmed by that? Having they not told us that they themselves have seen a lot of the problems we are talking about in the register? So the issues we are talking about here are not vexatious. Very well. In the, in the voter transfer we did this year, only 300,000 people, a little over 300,000 people transferred their votes. Why have they produced a transfer register with over 500,000 names? The extra 243,000 people, where are they from? Are you not interested in getting to know that 3,957 voters have been deleted from the register without their knowledge? They have voter ID cards, but they can't vote because somebody, an MPP full soldier, who has been appointed as an ICT consultant for the EC, has sat in the confines of his office and has deleted them from the register. Are you not worried about this? So, I mean, what I'm worried uh -oh. about, what I'm worried about is something that the director of communications of the MPP, Richard Ahiagba, has told me in a yet to be aired interview, uh, which will be airing tonight at 9 p.m. on Channel One TV. He said that you in the NDC lack principles, and that when they were fighting and shouting for a clean register, you rank and file said at the time that the electoral commission, the president said the Electoral Commission should be allowed to do its job and that 
you trusted the system that the EC had established. He says to me that the system that the EC at the time had is the same system. It's only the change of management. And so to the extent that you at the time appointed managers and you were happy and satisfied with the EC's systems, you should not be fighting the EC system at this time. And that the only thing you're fighting is the management of the EC, which has been constitutionally appointed. Well, he says that I, I'm, he I'm says that you're not sticking to your principles. Well, I think the only the only group of people who are not sticking to their principles are friends in the MPP. Because once upon a time in twenty sixteen, they contrived a frivolous allegation about the presence of over seventy thousand Togolese on our register and on the basis of that asked for an audit. Even though we knew same to be false, we agreed. And that is why the Justice V C R A C Crab Committee was set up by Salotto Say. Because a lot of say had not manipulated the register and say had nothing to hide. And we sent our representatives to that forum and we went and made our arguments. They came and made their case. At the end of the day, the committee checked the register and ascertained that what the MPP was saying was false. And that the, the other issues which were established to be true to be corrected through a re exhibition of the register. So we have been consistent, right? When the Justice VCR CCRAB committee was set up, we participated. We didn't issue statements saying that we will not allow the EC to do a simple audit. What will happen if the Electoral Commission, this Jimenza led the Electoral Commission, does the same thing Salosa said did by asking all political parties to select their IT experts to join these MPP food soldiers parading themselves as EC IT consultants for us? to go into the register and the EC IT okay. system and to prove the issues we are raising. They would rather be inconsistent and all that and all that. Very well. Finally, what next? You've done the demonstration. The EC before even you went on the demonstration said what you were demanding was not necessary because there's going to be an exhibition or there was an exhibition that kills the register in so many ways. <laughs> you have done the demonstration nationwide. What next? Does it make sense to you? The, the register has been presented to political parties. It has been exhibited already. And the EC is calling on us to bring evidence of illegal voter transfers and all that. So when are they going to rectify that? And when are they going to re-exhibit the register? They say they will not even re-exhibit the register. And you think that these are not serious issues that we should pay attention to. Well, what next is simple. We, will give the, we are giving the EC one week. And we hope to hear from them favorably. We, we hope that their conscience will put them to do the sensible thing, which is to allow for the register to be audited if they have nothing to hide. If we do not hear favorably from them in the next one week, the NDC will roll out a series of activities that will be undertaken okay. to compel the Electoral Commission to do the right thing. It's as simple as that. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. That's Sami Jemfi's National Communications Officer of the NDC. We are coming to you.